Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Last Pup Standing. And in Last Pup Standing, you're playing a two to five player game that takes about 15 to 30 minutes and is for ages probably about 10 and up. In the game Last Pup Standing, you are playing as a puppy army and you're trying to hold your bones. If you lose all your bones, you're gonna be out of the game. And if you're able to take away or remove all of the other puppy's bones, you're the winner. Each player's going to get a random hand set of five bone cards, they'll be counting as your life, and five other cards will be like puppy cards and action cards. And you'll be playing two cards on your turn. You'll also be playing one puppy card and a and a action card, or a single action or a single puppy card. And then you're going to draw two cards up from the puppy slash action deck at the end of your turn. Some cards will let you gather from the bone deck and whatnot, and others will let you gain change, which are these little bone tokens here, to try and preserve your life as long as possible. If you run out of bones you're out and that's it and if you can be the last puppy standing you'll win the game anyway let's take a day up um, below and i will show you how to play the game and everything included in the game last puppy standing or last pup standing here we have Last Pup Standing, and everything you get in the game, including the two different sets of cards, and the bone tokens, and the rule book, and of course, the box itself. And in the game, you're simply going to be shuffling both of these decks up. You'll take one deck, which will simply be the bone cards, which will show the number of bones, and then that fact that it is a bone card. All of them will be the same thing, and they range anywhere from 10 HP all the way down to, I believe, 1 HP. And hopefully you'll get the, the best cards, because you want to have the highest amount of bones, because that's going to be your life total for the game. No one will know your life total but yourself. This deck over here is going to be your little action cards as well as your attacking cards here. Those are the two different types there. On your turn you'll be able to play either the attack or the action or both and then you'll be drawing up your hand size at the end of the turn. Shuffle both of these decks separately and then you're going to deal out five cards to each player that is playing the game from each of the decks. So this is going to be one set of cards which will be your health and then this over here is going to be your uh, hand size which you'll be utilizing for attacking to try and remove bones from the other puppy armies. So you should have a set of 10 cards, five from each deck, for each player that is playing up to five players. Set these bone tokens aside, it doesn't matter what color they are, they're just simply going to be used as change in a way, in which if you have an attack that does five damage and you have a defense of four, uh, then you're going, or defense of six, I should say, then you're gonna get one back from five minus six, so you'll have one left, so you can get one of these bones of any color, utilizing them as change. And then after everybody has that, make sure these cards are in the middle somewhere that everybody can reach, and that is going to start the game off. Then you're gonna determine who starts, and I like to do puppy games based on whoever owns a puppy and or maybe just owns a dog, and they'll get to go. You'll look at your hand size, you'll see how many bones you have. So in this case, this player has got five, seven, two, five, and four. You can add those all up if you want, and that'll be 18, 19, 23 points of health. So hmm, pretty decent size of health. And then they're gonna have their different types of cards. And they can play them in any order they want. Uh, they can play one or the other or both, or they can simply pass. And in in this case, this player is definitely going to be playing that 10, and then maybe they'll want to pick up another card from the bone deck. That's very useful. So they'll go ahead and play the 10 first, and this player is the only other player playing right now, so they're going to lose 10 points of HP. So in this case, maybe an Let's see, he's got actually a good amount of health here. Uh, let's go with a 6 and a 7. That's going to be 13 points of HP. So in this case, he's going to get uh, 3 points back. So that's going to be health in front of him. Those are called bone chips there. And he's lost his health, unfortunately. Uh, then he's going to go ahead and this player is also going to go ahead and play this card, which is the Bone Hoarder, drawing an extra bone card. What is that? Eight more points of health. Very, very useful. These cards will go into this discard pile. These cards will go into this discard pile. Afterwards, you're then going to go ahead and draw two cards from this deck into your hand and pass play. And now this player is going to get a chance to go. And he's actually got some strong attacks as well, so he'll probably do nine damage there. And then he's got Beggar and Go Fish. Pick a number of uh, one through 10 and collect cards with the number on them. So if he wanted, he could play that one as well. So we'll start off with the nine going first and this player is gonna lose that nine HP, seven, eight, nine. So these will go to the discard pile. 
And then after that, we're gonna deal with this go fish and he might choose a number five. If he does, this player will go ahead and look through their hand and for every card with a five in it, that player is going to gain these cards. And in fact, there are bone cards, which are very, very useful and giving him his 10 health back that he lost last turn. And then he's gonna go ahead and draw two cards from this deck here and the game will progress just like that. Players are gonna keep going on and on. And like I said, you can choose to pass or not if you want or continue playing like a nine here. And then this one here, he's got a go fish card. So he can also say five if he wants, which is probably a good idea. But first he's gonna go ahead and do that nine damage. This player will lose uh, nine health. And of course this card would be hidden. So he may or may not want to choose to use these specific bone cards. But let's just go ahead and say he uses these two here, uh, an eight and a one, and that goes and discards this. Then he can flip over this card and say five, and then he's gonna get these two fives to his hand, as well as any other fives. Ooh, a spooky pop, that's gonna go into his hand as well. And then these cards will get discarded, and he'll get to draw two more cards from this deck. And that is basically the idea of the game. You're going to go back and forth up until the point where a player loses all the bone cards in their hand, as well as losing all of their tokens. Whenever a player happens to have no bones left in their hand or in front of them, that player will then be eliminated, discarding the cards they have, and the game will continue until there's just one single puppy standing and or puppy army, I should say. And if that player is by themselves, they win the game of last pup standing. Pretty simple, right? Let's go up and I'll talk about some of the other action cards that will take place in the game, what I thought about it, and then my review. So let's begin talking about last pup standing. Well, first of all, the game is fairly simple. Five cards and five cards, your health, and then your actions and your attack cards. You want to use your actions and attack cards to remove your opponent's bones and bone tokens from in front of them. And if you can do that, you eliminate them. Plays up to five players. So in a five player game, you'll need to eliminate four other players in order to win. There's quite a few cool little actions. I wanna go ahead and talk about them now. So I set them aside. The first, first one is called Bone Hoarder. And this one here says that you can pick up another card from the bone deck. It's very good and it's, it works very well in either player, in, in any number of players for the game. And it's a good way to keep you from going boneless because you don't want that to happen. Puppy Repellent will stop the next puppy attack. But remember, the next puppy attack could be chosen as a one in order to not have to suffer a loss of some severe cartage from another player. So if you say, I'm going to block your next attack, I can go, okay, well, I'll just throw one at you then. Uh, you got Steal here. Take a random card from another player's hand. That can be anywhere from a one to a 10, from a bone to an attack, or even just one of your favorite actions. Steal cards are fun. Beggar card. Everyone has to quickly give you a card from their hand, and the person who gives a last is going to have to give you two cards, and if they, you can't get a card from a player, they'll have to give you three bones. This card works very really well, well in a three, four, and a five player game, but it's probably a game that card I would actually either take out in a two player game, or if I'm going to use it, only make the player give you one card, um, and just they get to choose one card to give you, but it just makes the card a little bit less useful than the take a card at random. So it's it's fine, but it works really well in a larger player game. Switch, if you're going clockwise, switch to counterclockwise or vice versa, and then also take three bones. This is kind of a cool card. It's just not as cool in a two player game. It functions just like as you would a switch in Uno. It just kind of switches the turn order. I don't know if it gives you an extra turn or not, but I do know that it's only cool for me in a larger player game, especially a four or five player game. And then my favorite card, Hot Potato. This one, starting with the next player, that player is gonna discard a card and then everyone's gonna discard a card up to you, in which case you can discard a card and keep the, the cycle going until someone either decides to discard three bone chips or you decide not to discard a card again. So this can severely limit hands and bones from players without actually having to attack. So there are some really cool and interesting types of action cards in the game, or I think they're called pup cards. Nevertheless, uh, that is the basic idea of Last Pup Standing, going back and forth, trying to eliminate bones. It's a very simple game with a lot of randomized chance because you're gonna get a random five cards. It could be actions, it could be attack, it could be low attacks, high attacks, good actions or not or, or not so good actions. And then bones, you can get a ton of them. You can get the average amount, which is probably most likely, or you can get very few of them, in which case you could lose. But you're able to use strategy to deter your opponents from attacking you, saying, oh, you've got a lot of bone cards or playing cards that stop them from attacking you, et cetera, et cetera. So just because you may not have the greatest hand size, you're still going to be able to communicate with your opponents that maybe you do, and in fact, it may not be worth them, uh, worth their turn in order to attack you. Very interesting concept of having two different decks. You're always drawing from the puppy action deck, but there are cards that will let you get additional bones and then the tokens as well. Well, I do like the token idea. I just don't know why there are different colors. I 
I guess it just makes it a little cuter. So I'm okay with that. But just remember that all of the tokens are basically just change and they mean the same thing. If you have a six attack and somebody throws a nine health card, the person who threw the nine health card will get three in change for bone chips. Another cool thing with the game is our action cards that will let you steal bone chips from other players. So it does behoove you to try and make your opponents lose the bone cards from their hand and place bone chips out. However, holding a very large bone card in your hand can be dangerous and maybe you do want to cash it out for change because then you'll have bone chips out and players aren't able to take all bone chips away from you but may be able to take quite a few of them. Uh, another thing to note is that as long as you don't mind the chance of this game it's going to be fun. It's got some craziness added to it. It's got some really really cute puppy art. If you look at a lot of the artwork in the game you're going to see a lot of cute puppies in outer space. Puppies that are going and having business meetings. Uh, maybe some puppies that just got out of the bath. I really like the art of this game. It's fun. It's cute. It works well. It reminds me of a deck of playing cards for the bones and the attack cards. The graphic design is okay. I would actually rather see specifically for these type of cards less blank space and maybe a different type of font for the cards. I think it would give a more in-depth feel to the cards, especially, I, I like seeing, for these type of games, whole artwork. Just give me all that pretty artwork. And we'll see what it looks like. This is a prototype, so I'm not going to fault it too much for graphic design and whatnot, because I'm not sure what it's going to look like later on. But I would su definitely suggest changing some of the graphics up, increasing the size of the artwork, and making the cards just look overall uh, prettier, especially since you have such cute, cute artwork. And, of course, all the bone cards work very well. It has the theme of trying to get gather a puppy armor and my army and defeat your opponents. Overall, it's a fun, cute game. If you don't like, if you don't mind, random chance take that style games with a couple unique little twists to them with having the two different decks and utilizing the actions in certain ways, you're going to have fun with this one. Additionally, there might be some variants you might want to take certain cards out or put certain cards in for the game to make it work best for a two player game. But overall, it was a fun experience for me. I definitely suggest playing it with three or more players. That's where I had the most fun with the game. If you're interested in taking a look at Last Pup Standing, it's down below in the description, currently on Kickstarter. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate when you do so. Hit that notification bell button if you want to see more reviews just like this one. We're bringing you all kinds of Kickstarter content here. And don't forget to check out Last Pup Standing. If you're a family person, you got a lot of kids and whatnot, this is one of those games where you might be interested in because it has a lot of that cute factor. And then, of course, it teaches friendly confrontation in the game. Also, go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away Santorini, but it's almost, almost done. I think we got a couple more days left on it, and you can win that fabulous two, three, and four player game. It plays best at two, though. Santorini is really, really, really good. As well as taking a look at our live streams. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, we are giving away games there. It's a huge, fun community of people in which we play games just like this one live on stream on Facebook. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. 30 p.m. PST. Join us and win some games. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to being the last puppy standing! <laughs>